Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh, the food delivery service that brings fresh, pre-portioned ingredients right to your doorstep so you can make a meal in about 30 minutes. HelloFresh is so great for breaking out of recipe ruts. They have so many recipes to choose from and they have lots of options, including low-cal, smart car, pescatarian, and vegetarian. HelloFresh is also super flexible. You can change your delivery dates, you can change your meal preferences, or even skip a week. And as we're seeing increasing temperatures in the summertime, HelloFresh is now launching summer-only limited-time recipes that require no oven, so you don't have to heat up your house. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and prepping, and you can get a meal in about 30 minutes right onto the table, or in about 20 minutes using their quick and easy options. And the packaging HelloFresh uses to ship your food is almost entirely recyclable or made from recycled content. This week my family's favorite meal was the Middle Eastern chickpea bowls. So if you'd like to try HelloFresh for yourself, click the link down below or go to hellofresh.com and use my code EMMYMADE14 to receive 14 free meals, including free shipping. Big thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and for their continued support. Now today I need to use up some zucchini. I am growing zucchini for the first time in my garden, which seems kind of weird. You think I would have had a zucchini plant sometime, but I haven't. This year I have two. That means I have a lot of these. <laughs> Look at the size of the zucchini. It's incredible. You just don't check the plant for a couple days and then this suddenly appears. My kiddos had the grandest time harvesting this one and this one and came running to me saying, Mama, look at the size of the zucchini. <laughs> absolutely incredible last year I did a recipe on how to take zucchini and turn it into pineapple very fascinating kind of old-timey recipe but I really get it now now that I have two zucchini plants I have a lot of zucchini so I've been braising it sauteing it putting it in omelets and today I'm going to be making brownies with them yes brownies I adore brownies I saw this shared on King Arthur flowers Instagram post and I said yes yes ma'am I'm making that so here we are today so this recipe uses a food processor because we're going to be grinding down our zucchini so it's undetectable in our brownies the recipe says that you can use a blender if you do not have a food processor but definitely some kind of machine because we want this really fine we don't want any little strands of zucchini none of that because these are brownies first I'm gonna cut it in half here we go huh. Ordinarily, we do not let the zucchini grow to this size because they get a little bit tough. So baking with them is a great option. So a cup and a half is about one eight inch zucchini. Now the rest of this recipe is super, super simple. We're just gonna essentially dump everything in. In goes the zucchini. Three ovens ready. Three tablespoons of melted butter. Butter to me is essential in brownies. Essential. Three large eggs. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Loop. So that looks pretty liquefied. Half teaspoon of baking powder. Half a teaspoon of espresso powder. This will make the chocolate taste chocolatier. And I'm using the King Arthur brand. Some salt, heaping quarter teaspoon, bloop. Salt's super important in my opinion when it comes to baked goods because it makes it more delicious somehow. It kind of balances the sugar out. So half cup of flour, two thirds of a cup of cocoa powder. This is Dutch processed cocoa powder, which is a little bit different than natural cocoa powder. Most cocoa powders that you can find here in the States are natural, like Hershey's, for example. Natural meaning it's the dried remnants of squeezing cocoa butter out of the cocoa mass. And then it's finally pulverized into cocoa powder. It's slightly more acidic. It has more of a reddish color to it, a little bit lighter than Dutch process. Dutch process or European style cocoa powder has been alkalized, meaning that acidity has been tamped down with a little bit of alkalization. So it has a lower pH actually a higher pH. It's less acidic or tart in flavor. It has a darker color and often a kind of richer chocolate flavor. 
Now, it's important to look at your recipe to see what your recipe requires. Because we're dealing with pH here, it's going to affect the leavening. So if you're using baking soda, oftentimes they ask for natural cocoa powder and will react with the baking soda to create those lovely bubbles, which will make your baked product rise. Dutch processed cocoa powder will not react with the baking soda in the same way, and you probably won't get as much lift. So if a recipe does not say specifically what type of cocoa powder, look at the leavening agent. If it's baking powder, you can probably use either, but if it has baking soda, then I would opt for the natural cocoa powder. Alrighty, back to this. Sugar, three quarters of a cup. I'm going to pulse this to combine it. We don't want to overmix this because now we've added our flour. We don't want a tough brownie. So just a couple pulses. Now we're going to add three quarters of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Na na na. Into the bowl. And we're just going to give this a couple pulses so we can chop them up just a little bit. So here I have a parchment lined baking pan. It's lightly greased and it measures nine inches by nine inches. Into our pan. It's pretty runny. Now we're going to pop this into a 350 degree preheated oven and bake it for 25 to 30 minutes or until we poke a toothpick in it and we have a few moist crumbs, no wet batter. And then we're gonna let this cool completely before we make our frosting. Alrighty, my lovelies, the brownies are finished. So I went ahead and frosted these with the recipe that was included in the recipe. I took three quarters of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, and then I added a quarter cup of heavy cream, placed them together in a microwave safe bowl, and microwave them at 30 second intervals from my microwave that was one minute until the chocolate began to soften and the milk was nice and steamy. I mixed everything together to make sure all the chocolate was incorporated into the cream. I poured that on top of the cooled brownies, used an offset spatula to kind of smear everything around, and then I placed it in the refrigerator to sit for one hour just to get everything to set up a bit before I slice into them. So this is where I'm at right now. These look impressive. I mean, look at that luscious yum yum. But will it taste impressive? Will I taste any zucchini? Will they be rich and gooey? Will they be cakey? I don't know. Let's find out. So this is why I like using parchment when I make brownies. You can just pull it right out of the pan. Show easy. Nothing sticks. So a relatively thin brownie, I would say maybe about a half an inch tall. If you want a thicker brownie, I would bake this in a smaller pan, maybe an eight inch pan. But I still think it's going to taste good. Okay. First in half. Look at that. Here is the finished brownie, and it looks beautiful. The glaze is shiny. Brownie looks decadent. Look at that. Completely forgotten that there's actually zucchini in here. Zucchini. Does that make it healthy? Does that automatically make it healthy because there's a vegetable in here? No, I don't think so. But is it delicious? Let's find out. Okay, I'm gonna give this a cut. Look at that. Itadakimasu. Pretty delicious. When you look at the brownie, it looks really fudgy and dense, but when you eat it, it's actually not that fudgy. It's not sticky or gooey. It's cake-like, but not fluffy at all like a cake. It still remains relatively light in flavor. It's not heavy or overly sweet. The butter flavors in there, which I think is absolutely essential to brownies, the little bit of chocolate chips that kind of sink to the bottom, are delicious, adds a little bit more texture to the brownie as well, and adds another punch of chocolate. Mm -hmm. And you don't taste a hint, not a lick at all of the zucchini. None, zero. Mm -mm. That ganache frosting on top is not overly sweet and it's not excessive. Sometimes when I have brownies that have frostings on them. I have to peel off that layer because it's just so tooth achingly sweet. This one is not. It's just more chocolate, which I think is wonderful. <laughs> it's not too much chocolate either. 
Mm -hmm. It's quite nice. I think the only hint to the presence of the zucchini would be the texture. It's dense, but not fudgy fudgy, super, super dense as some brownies are, but it's not quite cake-like either. It's sort of this kind of hybrid in between. If you've got zucchinis growing like I do in abundance in your garden, or your neighbor has just gifted you a bunch of zucchini, now you can have an excuse to make yourself a batch of scrumdiddlyumptious brownies. If you like a printable version of this recipe, I'll put a link down below to my website. And thanks so much for watching. And big thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to try HelloFresh for yourself, click the link down below or head over to HelloFresh.com and use my code EMMYMADE14 to receive 14 free meals, including free shipping. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Tilu, take care. Bye.